Right now I have some strong butterflies. Oh, I feel like I'm pregnant. <laughs> I'm so nervous. I thought I would be fine. Please help me welcome the beautiful and talented Miss Ariana Sanders. I'm 19 years old, I'm from Jamaica, and I was born there, and um, ever since we were in Jamaica, we always went to church on Sundays. We went to Port Moore Missionary in Port Moore, Jamaica, and um, my parents were always involved with the church as well. So ever since I was young, I've always been involved with the church, and I sang a lot, and then once um, my dad moved to a church in Omaha, Connecticut, my older sister and another girl named Faith Williams, we started a choir there and we started singing. And ever since then, uh, being, a, being a part of the church has been a part of my life. So what age did you start learning music? It was when I was younger. I can definitely remember being at Portland Missionary Prep School in Portmore and being told that I was going to start some drum lessons. And um, I remember staying after school one time and. I, honest, I think I was like walking to the back of the school and there was like this really tall building. There was like a lot of stairs and I had to carry my drum up the stairs and uh, to my drumming lesson. And it was like one of the bongo drums. I don't know the proper term for them. But that's what I did in the beginning of elementary school when I was in fourth grade and they said, okay guys, you're gonna be able to join the band now because you had to be forced to do orchestra in third grade, then in fourth grade you could join the band. And so I remember that day we were sitting in the cafeteria and they had all the instruments set up and they were like, these are the instruments you guys are gonna be able to choose from to play. And I remember staring at the trumpet and I was like, I'm gonna play the trumpet. I wanted to play the trumpet and then I went home and my mom had told me the saxophone was her favorite instrument. And then I knew that because my mom liked the saxophone, I would play the saxophone. And so I started on the saxophone, which was in fourth grade, and I just kept going. And then once I got to middle school, the thought of the trumpet came back to me. So I snuck behind my band director's back, <laughs> Mr. Maz, um, who wanted me to focus on saxophone. And I went to take some private trumpet lessons. And um, the reason why Mr. Maz didn't want me to take the private trumpet lessons is because he didn't want it to like ruin my saxophone. I'm sure he wanted me to like, master it alto first and then I can learn other instruments and he was very right about that because I probably shouldn't have gone to take those trumpet lessons so eventually I stopped taking them and then I just went to focus on the alto and I um I took my band director's advice and I just worked on the saxophone throughout high school until now I'm still in the process of mastering it. Well, at your age you know you talk about time and stuff it seems like a difficulty so what are some of the difficulties so one difficulty I would say is comparing myself. That's definitely a difficulty because I often find myself comparing myself to other musicians or other people in general. And then like also like as a woman of color, I feel like, oh, well, maybe I shouldn't go through with auditioning for this because I'll be the only like woman of color there. And then sometimes like in my mind, I think, well, maybe I won't get this job or maybe I won't be able to get this performance opportunity because I'm a woman or because I'm a woman of color. It doesn't necessarily put pressure on me. It just kind of, it's just a thought that runs through my head. But then in reality, when I look at myself and I look at where I've been, I look at where I've come from, I realize like everything that I've done, all the opportunities I've been given um, were given to me because of my hard work and because of um, my confidence and courage. I realize that it's not necessarily pressure that's put on me because my work ethic hasn't changed because of those difficulties and my mindset hasn't really changed because of those difficulties. So instead of um, pressure, I would say it's been a motivation for sure.
I have two working saxophones and then I have a third saxophone that's purple that I just use for decoration in my room. Um, it can work if I got it repaired, but right now it's just chilling. <laughs> but this is my number one sax. So how often do you practice with that? I hate this question. Um, not often at all. I should practice a lot more and I need to do a better job at that, but I think um, I think a reason for that is just because this semester I've been studying online with Berkeley, so I haven't been um, having like any courses with saxophone instructing. Um, I have had a few lessons with some great people like Cedric Mayfield, and I met with my old high school band director, Andrew Lefebvre, um, once to help me with my Berkeley audition. But other than that, um, I haven't really had like many assignments, I guess you could say, relating to privately studying the saxophone. But the only times I find myself practicing is when I have a performance. I usually get ready for that. Yeah, String Theory School of Music. So uh, that was introduced to me by a good friend named Rufus. I actually met him at Shiloh. I didn't know who he was. He came up to me after church service. And I was like, who is this guy? <laughs> and he was like, hey, what's up? Um, I just want to tell you about the school that I work at. If you're interested in teaching saxophone there and introducing the gospel genre there. And so he gave me his name and his number. I wrote it down. I called him up, sent them an email. I was like, hey, my name's Ariana Stanberry. Rufus told me about this school. I just want to know uh, more about the school, everything like that. And then I automatically got connected with Amy and Chris, who are the founders of String Theory School of Music. So it's a music school that's right here in New London, Connecticut, uh, 96 Hawthorne Drive in New London. And they teach everything there, from saxophone to guitar to bass to vocals to strings to the violin, to piano, everything. I'm their youngest teacher, but they've accepted me just as if I was their oldest teacher. So I really love the environment there. Um, I would definitely recommend that school if you're interested in learning anything, especially the saxophone, because then I'll be able to teach you. <laughs> I've honestly been getting like good feedback from my friends and family. And I also have a lot of trust, which I, I really like. Um, people take me seriously, and I really respect that. Especially seeing that I'm a young musician, so when people ask me to um, either play at their function or tell me about an opportunity, they definitely respect me. They respect my gift, and um, they respect me as a person just as much as they respect me as a musician. And to be honest, money and competition has never been something that I'm interested in. Um, so it hasn't really affected me that much, but as far as being financially stable, studying the arts and making the arts um, your lifestyle is definitely risky. I would say that because um, at any moment in time, like I could get sick and miss a performance and then I miss making money. So what is the message to all the young artists? Number one, um, just be confident in who you are and what you love and what you believe in. Because no matter where you go, who you talk to, anyone and everyone will try and put you down. They'll try and convince you that you're not good enough. They'll try and convince you that you're not old enough. They'll try and convince you that what you're doing and what you're being successful in is not what you should be doing. Um, so definitely, definitely um, stay confident in what you believe in. Secondly, putting God first is very important. Um, prayer works. And if you believe in God and if you believe that His his plans for you are um, in the works, then you will surely have no doubt that what you love and what you believe in is what God wants you to be doing. And also, um, thirdly, just always remember your roots. Never forget your family, never forget your friends, never forget those that helped you to get to where you are now and where you want to be in the future. You never want to lose those connections because sometimes it's hard to find back or recreate a connection with someone else um, that you aren't as close with compared to your family or your close friends. <laughs>
I'm so glad we connected. Listen, we got so much more planned out. I got my concert coming up soon. You're on board for that. So I, I really thank God for you. God bless you. Let's have some fun. Ow! You know, you're such a, a well-rounded young woman and I'm so excited to have been a part of your climb to the top. And I know you're going to be amazing in all that you aspire to do in this life. And you're a wonderful teacher, you're naturally gifted, and I'm so excited to have met somebody who is appreciative of those gifts and who's going to, you know, take them and use them in all the right ways. So our best wishes and our love to you. I wish you all the best. Uh, you're a very talented musician, uh, singer, saxophonist, everything. And um, God's got many more blessings for you. Hey, Ariana! We're so proud of you. You did a really good job. Yeah, you did so good today. I'm very proud, and I'm so happy to be your best friend. <laughs> You're gonna do an awesome job. I love you so much. You are so awesome. Keep up the good work. You're amazing. <laughs> <laughs>